Welcome to Polyglot Podcast. I'm Christian, and today we have Alexei as our guest. Uh, so, Alexei, can you introduce yourself uh, shortly before the first question? So my name is Alexei. Currently, I live in Estonia, in Tartu, and working in the Tartu University. I'm some kind of Fenno-Ugric activist nowadays. Yeah. Uh, I actually also have lived in Tartu when I was a child. I was uh, from the ages seven to ten. So I, I, I speak actually Estonian too. Uh, okay, but uh, let's start with the question. What is your mother tongue? The first language you learned? So my native language is Komi. I spoke only Komi uh, like for first six years of my life and after that in the school I started to speak Russian so I, I, at this point I think I speak uh, Komi and Russian at the same level okay uh, yeah let me ask more about Komi because I think a lot of our uh, listeners don't know that much about Komi language uh, so you are from Komi Rep Republic or from another area of Russia? Yeah, I am from the Komi Republic. It's a republic on the northwest part of Russia. Northeast. Yeah. And, Northwest, yeah. Okay. And what's your hometown? Uh, in Russian, it's called Ustkulam. And in Komi, it's Kulandin. Kulandin. And... Uh, Kulandin is your hometown where you were born and went to school. Yes, uh, it's like uh, 6,000 people live there. It's oh, pretty it's... small if you compare to Russian cities. And... Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's quite small, 6,000. It's small for Russia. For Estonia, it's pretty big. And I think yeah, for Finland, it's as well. That That's true. That's true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so your both parents speak Komi. Yeah. And, and I have three brothers and they also speak Komi. Yeah. And um, I, I've heard there are three varieties of Komi or how many like main dialects are there? Oh, I, I don't know about dialects. It's like uh, depends on what you uh, count as a dialect. But there is two literature norms of Komi language. There is Komi Zurian and Komi Perme. And Komi Zurian is spoken in the Komi Republic, and Komi Zurian or Komi Perme is spoken in the Perm Krai. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and how close are these two? Uh, forms um, it, you can communicate like pretty easily in uh, I mean if Komi uh, Zurian speaks to Komi Permiak they will understand everything I think most of the things so it's more like the dialects not like the separate languages but currently they are separated so yeah okay uh, I will ask later maybe some more questions about Komi, but uh, okay, so at school you were six years old when you started Russian. Yeah. And uh, has it changed? Uh, because I think in your times, uh, people had to start when they went to school. Do Komi people now, uh, do they speak Komi at home or do they speak Russian? Has it changed when you were young? I think it's it changed. Nowadays, most of the Komi speak Komi and Russian together in the families. But in my days, there was only Komi. And I have like a 14, a 13 years old brother. And he already speaks with my mother in Russian and in Komi. Like oh, okay. Mixing both the languages. Okay, so you're... One of your brothers, the youngest one, is uh, 13 now. Yeah. And how old are you? I am 28. 
28. So you went to school late 90s, early 2000s? Uh, 2001. To, yeah, yeah, okay. And um, do you speak Komi with your br two, two other brothers? Or do you speak Komi with all of your br brothers? No, I speak Komi with every Komi person that I know. So okay. It's the only or the option for me. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Crash into them. Okay, so only the youngest brother speaks to your mom in Russian. I mean, when they speak yeah. together uh, to each other, they yeah. like mixing both the languages, Russian and uh, Komi, because it's maybe it's easier to say some things in Russian for them. I don't know what's the reason. Oh yeah, okay. Uh, ha have you spoken with your brother? Have you said like uh, any opinions about? that or you just leave them speak a mix of Russian uh, he, he can't explain why it happens it just happens yeah, yeah, yeah. he used to it I don't know it's just uh, automatically not uh, not for purpose yeah oh, okay and um, in early 2000s in your village did you have to study other um, uh, wait one question for that was was your education at school uh, in Russian or Komi or both? Like all by these the subjects? Law, by the law, it has to be in Russian. So it was in Russian. Even if teachers were Komi speaking teachers, they could explain some things in Komi if you don't understand it in Russian. But all the education system is in Russian. There. So all, all the subjects, but were there also Komi lessons yeah they, there was there was komi for as a native language and komi as a foreign language i don't know how to say it correctly i was studying it as a native language and uh, nowadays there is no this kind of options they are left only um, komi language as a state language only not as a native so my brother is uh, studying it as a uh just a state language yeah so the like they are studying it very poorly like for russians they are not really interested in it they don't speak they just read some books and that's it some sentences yeah so uh there might be situations where part of the people on those classes are komi uh natives and then there are russians who Russian nat nat natives who aren't that interested, maybe. So then it's it becomes a bit like uh, boring for those who speak already Komi and the level of uh, those classes is not that high. Yeah, it's useless for the people who already speak Komi as a native language. Yeah, okay. And uh, what's the first uh, foreign language like? If did you did you have to like um, study English or could you pick German, French, any any other languages? Uh, for me, it was English starting from the fifth grade, and before that, there was only Komi and Russian. That's it. Yeah, and starting from fifth grade until university, you had English as well. Yeah. Yeah. What about your brother who's uh, 13 now? Uh, he also have only English, I think. But the educational system in Russia, like I mean, uh, teaching other, lan other languages is on the very low level. And I couldn't speak anything, I couldn't say anything in English after school. I had to study it myself uh, in the university times. Uh, through the internet not through the educational system yeah okay uh so when you ended your school you mean uh before university so at age 16 17 uh it, it was in the university times i was 17 when i finished school yeah and went to the university after that yeah and you didn't have any options like picking optional languages 
Uh, in the university, there was option to choose uh, French or German, but uh, I wasn't interested in those languages. Yeah, yeah. And what did you study? Was, was it also in Komi Republic, your university? Yeah, I went to university to Suktovkar. It's the capital city of the Komi Republic. And first I was studying um, computer science and I couldn't finish it and I switched to computer networks. Yeah. And you uh, completed that? Yeah. Those studies? Yeah. And um, when did you move to Estonia? I moved last year, uh, like uh, after war started. I still was in the uh, Komi Republic and like in two months I left because they charged the criminal case against me and I had no other options. Okay, uh, why? Uh, or, or do you want to comment this topic? Before? Yeah, yeah, I can comment. I was some, I was like political activist as well in Komi Republic. I was uh, in the I am. I was volunteering in Navalny's presidential campaign, and first arrest happened that time, like two thousand eighteen, and I was on the on their list, let's say, <laughs> that, uh, like yeah. a, as a dangerous person for the system. Yeah, and yeah. just uh, when the war started, I just went to protest uh, against the war the same day, in twenty fourth February, and. Uh, I was talking to police. I said uh, how dare they uh, how they are not ashamed to be part of the system that started the war in the twenty uh, first century in the center of Europe. And I yeah. said, you are doing it just like fascists did. Yeah, and they arrested me for this detained for these words. And uh, they put me to the jail for uh, five days that time, and uh, after like um, no, I after two months, something like that, they charged the criminal case for insulting policemen. Oh damn! Uh, how, and how, on what, the on the yeah. next day after they like uh, listed charged this case, I just flew to Turkey, and uh, from Turkey I went to Estonia. Yeah. So immediately after you were, uh, char uh, yeah, you, you got to leave. You took the plane to, uh, Turkey and then Estonia. Yeah, because I had no Estonian visa, so I went to Turkey to make the visa. Ah, okay, okay. So you got the Estonian visa then from Turkey. Yeah, I was uh, in Turkey for two weeks, I think. Yeah. And uh, which month was it when you moved to Estonia? It was May, 14th May, as I remember. Yeah. It's so, like more than a year ago. Yeah. And how did you pick Estonia? Oh, I had uh, friends. I was before in Estonia for, as a tourist. And uh, I had many Estonian friends, and they helped me a lot. They just called me to come to them to here. Yeah, and were the, those friends living in Tartu and not, for example, in Tallinn? Yeah, most of my friends live in uh, Tartu. Um, the guy who um, gave me the place, living place, uh, a year ago, he moved to Finland now. But yeah. most of my friends still here in Tartu. Yeah. Um, in one year, have you have you learned some Estonian, or do you use use mo mostly English or Russian when communicate with the locals? Uh, I learned some Estonian. I see the progress in this year that happened. I understand things. I understand how when people speak slowly, not so fast. But yeah. uh, mo mostly I use uh, English here. Yeah. But when you go to shops and some simple things, you probably use Estonian already. Yeah, yeah. I am I'm trying first to start in Estonian, but when I don't get what they are saying, I ask them to say it in English. Yeah. 
uh, and I guess you've been just self-studying or just hearing and listening stuff or how organized has your Estonia studies been? Uh, I, mostly I learn it through the internet from some videos on YouTube and uh, using some apps, uh, mobile apps. And, yeah. uh, there is no available courses now for Estonian and you don't participate yet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Have you used some applications? Yeah, there is an application called Drop. I think it's the best one for Estonian. Uh, do you learn from Russian to Estonian? No, I use, English. I, use, I, use, English. I use English, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay, and I also, uh, also, I work uh, with the machine translation system for Fino Ugric languages and looking at the data, preparing data for machine translating. I am learning this way as well. Yeah. When you see translations from Estonian to other languages. You know, I actually you, uh, found this one transla translating system or. Ke was it Kele Tölka or something like Neurotölka? Neuro Neurotölka. Yeah, I actually uh, tried it. Uh, I have one text I I want to um, I want to read in Komi uh, maybe later. But uh, yeah, I I tried it and uh, it seems really cool. So uh, can you describe a bit? Explain what what this Neurotölka is for people who are listening now? Oh, simply it's like uh, Google Translate, but for small languages, uh, for small Finno-Ugric languages. Yeah. Um, it's like just a machine translation system as well as a Google Translate. And what's your but role? Uh, cur this? Currently it's not in the great state because it was like first iteration. Uh, it was uh, trained on the very small data and it's not great at this point yet. But the next iteration is coming this uh, summer and it will get much better soon. Yeah, I understand. Uh, I, I was testing and I saw some mistakes, but I was still impressed. And I, I thought that, yeah, it's probably in the testing phase. But uh, I was, for example, trying it from English or Finnish to Northern Sami, which I've studied for a year now. And I tested it between like Finnish, uh, English, Estonian uh, to translate into Northern Sami and some, yeah, I tried also some other Uralic languages and it, it, it was, it, it seemed quite good, but yeah, I, I, I noticed some small mistakes in some points that it didn't give uh, the translation in Northern Sami, it actually gave in some other language, which I noticed. But anyways, I think that's really, it's a really cool project. And yeah, I'm I'm really happy you have that because because, uh, because it's, it's a bit hard now uh, finding something like Google Translate for Northern Sami, which I've been studying. So I always have to use some online dictionary and finding uh, single words and, the conjugations so being able to translate whole sentences with neurotelga is is really cool and I, i'm also actually going to study um com computer science in in lapland i'm going to start my study soon so it's also really interesting for me uh, so how big is the group developing this and what is your role? Um, it's changing all the time. Team is changing, like people are going and uh, coming and going all the time. So it's changing all the time. Currently, I think it's like five people working like actively on that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And... Uh... How how did you get involved in the project? You had a friend or 
it was kind of through my friend. They were looking for the native speakers of the Finno-Ugric languages to translate the test data set to testing how good this translator works, like automatically test. And I translated it and they asked if I have any experience in this field. And I said, I have some. And after it's just some talk, they offered me in this job. Yeah. OK. Um, can we actually do now the test? I, I tried uh, translating from uh, English, or I don't know, I used to. I switched then to Finnish because I noticed in one point that it it didn't translate so well from English to uh, the to, to Komi varieties. So I used uh, Finnish, but yeah, okay. So I have a few sentences. Uh, let's go one by one. You can actually then cor correct my pronunciation but i'll try my best uh which so you 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 speak the zirian uh yeah okay okay the first one is hello everyone uh cholum stavnud is there it have to be stavnudly yeah it's fine kind of correct stav, here it says stavnud it should be stavnudly or yeah so cholum stavnudly yeah Hello, everyone. Okay. Menashuone Christian. My name is Christian. Yeah, that's correct. <laughs> no, not not correct. And the, correct, correct. Yeah. Okay. Uh, can you repeat the same, like saying your name, so I can hear if, like, what the correct pronunciation is. Menashuone Oleksiy. Menashuone Christian. Okay. Yeah. Uh so the next one is Ame Uni Common Cook Arusa. I'm yeah thirty-two years old. But uh, we say like minim like kushka kiamis arus. Okay. Like more simpler. But uh, it also is correct one. Is it more literal form this one and not that colloquial? No, it's uh, kind of the same. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. You can use both. Yeah, yeah. Me fin. Me fin. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so that means I'm Finnish. Oh, okay. Now, yeah. Here, I here here here. There is actually I spotted an error. I tried to say my mother tongue is Finnish. It says, "Komikiv, fin yo yegra." Which I understood means Komi language is a Finno-Ugric language, right? Yeah. Yeah, but in Komi uh, Permiak, it's it, it it translated menam menam mam kuv fin kuv. Yeah. Also, you can say menam chujan kuv. Yeah. Most say menam chujan kuv. Menam. Okay. Menam chujan kuv fin kuv. Yeah. Okay, so that means my mother tongue is Finnish. Me ola fin Finlandian. You can't say like this, but we say me ola Finlandia un. Finlandia un. Okay, yeah, that yeah, actually it's written here like that. Fin Finlandia un. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I I just read it badly okay and the last one is radeta kiyas veladne veladne yeah yeah that's correct radeta the stress have to be on the first syllable always is that is in finnish radeta 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 okay radeta kiyas veladne yeah that's correct i like i love the learning language yeah um how was how was my uh pronunciation because i'm a native finnish speaker what and i have no experience about komi so what what's your <laughs> opinion uh you have accent uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah but what was the uh stress better than maybe if russians 
because in Finnish it's the on the first syllable. Oh, Russians are fully like uh, they can't really speak it because it's written in Cyrillic and they are reading more like uh, they would read it in Russian. So your pronunciation, your reading is better than Russians. Yeah, 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 yeah. I yeah, I was just uh, yeah, I knew I wasn't able to say them well because I have no no experience, but I just wanted to test. If it helps even a bit, like speaking a Uralic language, like uh, Finnish. And, it does help. And what do you think when you're studying now Estonian, how much has it helped uh, being a native Komi speaker? It's helping with the grammar system because grammarly it's like pretty similar with Komi, but uh, with the pronunciation and phonology, it's like not really that hard, but it's different. Because, for example, I have problems E and U uh, because we don't have this kind of things. There is yeah. A, A with dots and A, just yeah. A. So we don't have this difference. So sometimes I am uh, mixing those. Sounds. Okay. So do, you don't have a and u. Yeah, we don't have it. Yeah. Uh, I I read that the komi ö uh, is more like the Estonian ö. Uh. Um, I would not say it's close, pretty close. Yeah. But uh, komi ö uh, is more like. Schwa in English, for example, when you say bird yeah. or girl, it's like uh, uh, uh okay, uh, a like bit more, more, more on the front, I think, than uh, Estonian. Uh. Yeah, what do you think about the Estonian? The uh, uh, like uh, apple, uh, uh, for me, that was hard when I was a child, and I, I'm not sure if I if it's perfect uh, currently, but. That was uh, for, for for me. It's not that uh, hard because it's something between komi ö and Russian ü. Yeah. And when you put this sound somewhere between, it's like, uh, it works for me. No problem. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Which one is easier? Easier the ö in Estonian, like night ö, or the ö, like ö? Oh, it was all with that. Waves. That that one is easier to you. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um. So, yeah, Komi has seventeen cases. Was it? Uh, it depends on which Komi. In Komi there is sixteen. Sixteen. Uh, uh. Yeah. And com per Komi per per permiak. Uh. Se yeah. One one more. And I, I think so. I don't remember exactly. I never studied it, never learned it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Just heard about it. Yeah. Um, yeah, 17 or 16 is a lot because in Finnish and Estonian, there are, I think, 14 and 15 or 13 and 14. I'm not sure. And that's something that scares a lot of language learners. But I guess for you, 14, 13, 14 cases is is nothing. And I mean, you have you have like uh, the same structures in Komi. So I, I guess it's easy to you understand the uh, Estonian cases. Now, when I learn languages, I don't care about cases at all. I don't know all the cases even in Komi. I just use them. Yeah, 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 so yeah. You don't need to learn all of the cases. Yeah. I so, think. so you you don't care that much about the grammar. You just uh, naturally listen the language and focus. I on mean, that if more. you care, if even if you care about grammar, you don't need to know every case. How? What is it? Uh, what is the ending? You just need to know how to use them correctly. Yeah. 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 So I don't know. And Komi also doesn't have gender. Or, yeah. And what about articles? 
Uh, we don't have articles, but we have this kind of endings that work like uh, articles. Like when you say, uh, for example, the table is Busan and the table is Busanus. You have to add. I think it's the same in Finnish, like uh, Nimi and Nimeni. Like, um... and it's just the name and my name or something like that. It's kind of works the same. Okay. Uh, well, um, but you don't have like name and the name or an a uh name. A uh, name is like Nim, uh, but when you say my name, Nimai, his name, Nimus, and uh, in the third uh, person, it's uh, in second it's Nimut and in third it's Nimus. Yeah, yeah, um, okay, I understand. That's uh, yeah, that's not articles. It's like uh, possessive suffixes. Uh, but I, I, so I guess you don't, you don't know maybe that many uh, terms gra of grammar or. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I know yeah. it, it. It's not articles for sure, but yeah, it yeah. works uh, kind of the same when you talking about the uh, thing that you know what in the other person knows which uh, thing you are talking about yeah yeah in english you add the but in komi you add this one of these endings yeah yeah and uh yeah that so for all the listeners that's a possessive suffix which is like uh in this case you put in the end something but in finnish we can say also my name we can say Minun nimi, or we can also say minun nime ni, like both my and the possessive suffix in the end. Can you do that in Komi also? Like say my and then have the both, like. Yeah, you, you can say, but uh, without ending, it would be weird, I think. Oh, okay. It sounds non natural for the language. Yeah, uh, because in Finnish we can say ni me ni, leaving the moon or minun away. But if you say my minun or moon, ni, uh, after that you can say either ni me or ni me ni. So there are a lot of uh, options, and the colloquial one would be moon ni me, which can or minun ni me. And is it okay to speak like that? Yeah, I, uh, say yeah. Like that. I say moon, moon nimi, but the literal one would be minun, and the most literal would be minun nime ni. But so it's like it's the same in Komi. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what's my in Komi? It's menam. Menam. Yeah. And name? What was name? Nim. Menam nim. And can you say menam nim and the possessive suffix of like menam nimai? Menam nimai. Ah, okay. So it's a bit like in Finnish. You can have all those variations. Yes. And you yeah. can skip menam, you can say nimai, and people will understand. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, yeah, name. yeah, like nimai. Mm. The same as in Finnish. Yeah, yeah. That's exactly the same. A bit uh, different in Estonian because Estonian doesn't have possessive suffixes, so you just have to say minunimi or mo munimi. Yeah. Uh, what do you think? What languages have been hard to learn as a native speaker? Hard. There is no such thing as a hard language. It really, it's on your apart how much time you want to spend i can say which one was easier the yeah. most easier language is uh, udmurt i speak some udmurt i learned through some udmurt songs yeah and uh, udmurt for commies is like uh, estonian for Finns. okay like, not that hard to learn it and you, you can just start to speak with the person you will understand some things not everything but most of the things same. Wow, that's yeah. that's cool. Uh, so 
when so you said only by listening to songs or yeah listening songs and after that like uh, trying to translate it uh, to understand how it works and uh, trying to speak uh, to some people in the internet some old books and that's it i never opened any study book for old yeah. books okay language only and... through the internet and through the some content Wow, uh, if there are any people who want to do the same, how how, how can you find Udmur songs? Uh, most of them are on the vk.com, it's the like contact, uh, social, Russian social network. Yeah. There is plenty of uh, Komi song, uh, I mean Udmur songs. Yeah. And so current... also so, some of the songs are in the Spotify and the YouTube music, but uh, very few, not so many. And maybe you, I don't know if you can find on YouTube, uh, I mean, Spotify songs based on their language, I guess not. You just have to know the names or so maybe that's a bit hard on Spotify. And what about the contact uh do you need to be able to speak russian or does it support english or other languages if someone who doesn't speak russian wants to go to vk and start listening to these uh udmurt songs does vk have english version yeah it has like more than 20 languages i mean interface translated interfaces and uh, it has even an interface for komi and Ludmurk as well oh wow okay yeah so there you just search Ludmurk songs or there are some playlists uh i mean in the spotify there is also some community playlists mm. where you can find more songs but in contact it would be better to find the uh, communities there like uh, groups uh, and there will be posted many more songs but you can search uh, by the language if you are searching for the music okay that's cool and so you, also people just can ask some Utmurts to send them some music and they, I think they will they will be glad to hear this from the yeah. foreign person and will help for sure. <laughs> but how, how can people find Utmurts? Utmurt, uh, people, uh, do you have any good tips how to find them? I don't know. It's better to find them through other people. For example, you can add me and uh, like look through my friend list, and you for sure you will find some Udmurts, and um, or you can ask uh, to give some contacts, and I can yeah. give them. Well, I think at least I'm going to ask after this discussion some Udmurt people's contacts if if you know anyone who would want to do this same episode in about like Udmurt language and spoke, speaking about languages, I think it would be really cool also to interview someone who has Udmurt as their native language. But yeah, we can talk th about that later. Um, and so you you then found online some Udmurt natives also and practiced your Udmurt skills. I mean, I was uh, um, uh, some Komi activists in the finno ugric field. Also, I had some friends. We had like many events in Komi where uh, I could meet some Udmurt people. And I just made some friends and we were talking in Udmurt. And that's it. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And Komi Republic has some borders with uh, Udmurtia, or is Udmurtia really far away from Komi Republic? It doesn't have any common borders. Um, yeah. It's, I don't, I'm not sure how many, like 400 kilometers far from the Komi Republic to Udmurtia. Yeah. And currently, you can speak quite quite fluently. Udmurt as well. I would not say fluently. It's still mixing uh, yeah. Komi and Udmurt. Uh, okay. 
and I had no practice for a long time, but still I can communicate, you know, more than it would be not problem. Yeah. Are, are there a lot of similar words, like or, or identical words even? And there are some identical words. There are many, many uh, similar words. Um, but still, some of they had like a Tatar influence, and they have uh, many Tatar words that would be not understandable for Komi speakers. Yeah. And but there is it's exactly like uh, Finnish and Estonian. I yeah. think Estonian has uh, um, influence of German language, and Finnish has influence of Swedish language. The same in Komi. Uh, Komis have influence from. Russian language, most of the influence, and Udmurts have most of the influence from Tatars. Mm, yeah. Have you noticed a lot of a lot of familiar words in Estonian and Komi? Oh, there is only one. My favorite is Pu. It's exactly the same, like um, three. And uh, the second one is V, that it's butter in both languages what was it we oui. ah uh, yeah in estonia i think is a yeah we oui. we oui. it's also we oui. it's the same exactly it's yeah. pronounced the same way as in, in both languages okay but also there are some similar words but not really pretty much mm -hmm. uh actually that's voi in finnish so yeah i know yeah yeah, yeah. but uh, I found out there are a few more, not only those, uh, but you say three, pu or pu or pu or pu. Uh, it's written with one pu, yeah. but uh, with one u. But when you read it, it's like something between long and short u is pu. Yeah, yeah, it sounds a little bit shorter yeah, than yeah. in Estonian and Finnish, where we say pu. Ooh. Ooh. You can say both way and it will be correct for Komi. Yeah, so Poo. Or was it too short? It was too short. Oh, <laughs> okay, so Poo. Poo. It's Poo, yeah. Yeah, okay, that's how I would say in Finnish. And I found out, okay, can you guess what's... Uh, in Komi, this I, I will say in Finnish. So, uni. Do you know in Komi, or I mean, you can say in English, in Komi. I don't remember. I don't know. Uh, during the night, you see uni. Oh yeah, it's a dream. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but you... in Komi, it's uh, it's what. Ah, okay. I I I I found un. I I found un this one. is not a dream. It's uh, when you want to sleep, and it's like it's the feeling. I don't know how to explain. Ah, uh, okay. Un is a is a dream, as I know. But, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, un is like the feeling that it's coming when you want to sleep. Hmm. Yeah, actually, in Finnish, we say uni about the dream, but also uh, I'm like sleepy, olen uninen. So, or mulle tule uni, the sleepiness is coming to me. Like, uh, I oh, think, yeah, sleepiness. Yeah. Un is sleepiness more. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think in Finnish, it, it has to be translated in, into two words in English, but. Yeah, I, th I guess it's a bit similar then. Uh, what about, can you guess this one? Very, okay, you probably know. <laughs> it's a blood. Yeah. In Komi, it's beer. Yeah, that, quite similar. What about uh, this one? This is a, a verb. Menna. This is infinitive. Yeah, yeah no, it's to, to go. Yeah. Correct. In Komi, it's mun. Moon, yeah, yeah, quite similar, and okay. The I have two which are not that that close. Uh, Vesi is water. Yeah, 
in Comet va. And I find the plural form was like va vayas vayas. Ah, uh, but it's weird to use in plural. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, water. Yeah, 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 yeah. It is even in Finnish like vedet. It's yeah. <laughs> but there was something like beginning with a v and the s in the plural form at least. And okay, this one is yeah. Geli and kuv. Yeah, I don't, something small maybe, but yeah. Uh, so I think that was interesting that there are some, although I think Finnish, Estonian, and Komi, I think the, do you know how long the distance, like the lingua, how do you say, uh, lexical distance? No, no, no. But yeah, the distance between those language is probably the same as maybe what would you say between english and between english and russian but english is yeah. a bad example here it's yeah yeah, yeah to take uh, swedish and russian for example there yeah. are some common things but not so many and a swedish person could not understand russian person. yeah true so it's the same Komi person will not understand the finnish person without learning each other's languages yeah but still maybe a bit closer to finnish and estonian than to hungarian uh, i think it's the same uh... yeah yeah but in the in, like the, this is really long to hungarian and finnish yeah. estonian both yeah so uh, komi and udmurt are like uh... Uh, it's called Permic languages, and the Permic languages is like uh, uh, Slavic languages in Indo in the European family. So yeah. Slavic people could understand each other, but uh, not really good. I mean, not perfectly, but pretty good. And the same for Komi and Udmur. They could speak to each other and under understand something, communicate about some simple things without problem yeah so without even any knowledge about udmurt akomi people would at first like straight away understand quite much if they if quite much not everything yeah not everything correctly there are many like false friends also sometimes um, but anyway about simple stuff they could um, speak to each other about nature for example yeah nature language is quite the same yeah 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 the origins are so old in nature yeah vocabulary that even komi and finnish has like this tree oh that's my favorite one yeah there is also similar word in uh, finnish it's purra and then komi it's purni it's uh, like, to bite yeah, in Komi, it's to bite with aggression. <laughs> ah, okay, okay. We, yeah, we always bite with an aggression. So it's so <laughs> <Yeah>. purra. <laughs> and what what was it? Uh, in how, can you repeat it? In Komi, it's purn. 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 It's ah. in infinitive. And when I am biting yeah. like this, it's pura. Pura. Okay. That's interesting. Um, so I had one question I forgot about that Komi. Anyways, what do you think? Uh, what's the future for Komi, Udmurt, and maybe maybe other Ura Uralic languages in in Russia? That's a very difficult topic to talk right now because the future is unclear at all. It depends on what happened to the war in Ukraine. If Russia loses and the uh, Russian people will be finally disappointed in their government, there could be some revolution just like more than 100 years ago. And I hope that some independence, uh, we will get some independence in Komis and Udmurts. We have like mm -hmm. good perspectives to be independent, but who knows? We'll see. Yeah. 
future and... is not bright for us. And uh, Russia has this uh, thing that uh, when there happen some changes in the political system, it's shrinking and shrinking. Like uh, yeah. the when the uh, empire fall apart, uh, Finland became independent, uh, Poland became independent, mm. and Baltic states as well. But uh, after Second World War, they took Baltics back. But when Soviet uh, uh, Union fall apart, again, there are many new countries became to existing. So I hope the same will happen in near future. Yeah. Was it so that Komi Republic used to be like autonomous? but not anymore or how is it or d- did it change anything if they had the status of being autonomic republic or does it have any uh, effect by the constitution all the republics that are in russia by their constitutions it's like it's a state yeah it's a true true state uh, by the constitution and by the law but law in Russia doesn't work at all, so it means nothing for them. Mm. But officially, yeah. it still has some autonomy. Yeah. And there are how many republics? Was it 17, 19, something, something like that? Uh, nowadays, there is more. <laughs> yeah. Because the Ukrainian regions are, are also became republics. Mm. Well, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. And how was, how was it in the Soviet period? For Komi speakers, did it get much worse and how, compared to what it was before the Soviet time? Uh, before the Soviet time, uh, the uh, population in the Komi Republic was like mononational. Uh, there was only few percent of others, like uh, let's say 95% of Komi people and 5% of others. And in the Soviet time, the, the educational system in Komi language was developed and they were studying in schools in Komi and we still have some study books uh, for mathematics, for uh, biology and for, this, for, for the main, uh, what is it? Subjects? Yeah, for the main subjects, we had like uh, everything in Komi. But yeah. in Stalin's time, there was some kind of this policy where they uh, started to mix all the native languages with Russian like really hard and uh, played a huge role in the how current Komi language was developed. We use so many Russian loans. Because even in the in books, in the radio, in the TV, they were speaking with this mixture of uh, Russian and Komi. Before Stalin, they were they there were people who were some kind of purists, uh, purists. They were cle- trying to clean up the language, make the new words for the language, and some of these new words still used these days. But in Stalin times, they uh, killed most of the intelligentsia. I don't know how to say it in uh, English correctly. So they killed most of the like active people and it became much more worse than it was before the Soviet times, I think. Yeah. And uh, many Russians and other nationalities were sent to the Republic uh, because we had this uh, camps, gulag. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, nowadays, there are only 20% of Komi people left in Komi Republic. I mean, if you uh, count whole population of the Republic, there is 80% of others, Russians mostly, and yeah. 20% of Komi only. Before the Soviet time, it was like 95% Komi people. And it, in my opinion, it's much worse now. Yeah. 
and I guess this is because of this uh, assimilation uh, policy that they wanted to uh, dissolve the majority of uh, different regions by, by pouring in like ethnic Russians and other nationalities. So there are like no regions where ethnic minorities have a majority, I, I, I guess. Is that so? Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Uh, we had also in Nordic countries, uh, which are democratic countries, but the, we also had this assimilation policies by the Finnish, Estonian, no, Finnish, Swedish and Norwegian governments who assimilated a lot of like Sami people. And they are like uh, generations of Sami people who lost their language. And that's why there are a lot of Sami people now who have to learn their native language as a foreign language or as a second, third language. Uh, yeah. So I think, but there was no political oppressions, I think, in Finland and Sweden. Well, at least not not that kind of that you you had in Soviet Union, yeah, and no prison camps. Although I have heard that uh, the children were taken by force and put into into the like uh, schools away from their parents, and they were like assimilated but yeah nothing 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 same uh, as soviet union and the gulags and that Akomi had to be like iceland uh, in the east uh, i mean in the west like Komi had to be the same kind of isolated land from mm. the others and it was mononational state yeah uh what do you think how many so Around hundred thousand people speak Komi as native speaker, or is that an old uh, information or old number? And nobody knows how many Komi yeah. speakers there because this uh, it's impossible to count. And uh, when the Russian state tried to count it on the I don't remember how it calls in English when you census. Yeah, uh, it was. Total bullshit, as people say. Yeah. It, it didn't work, so nobody knows the uh, current number of Komi speakers. According to that statistic, it's around 100,000. Yeah. And what do you think? How many ethnic Komi people speak Komi uh, like fluently? As there uh, flu fluently, very few people speak. Like I am not sure if there is like fifty thousand. Uh, but uh, in general, many people speak, and nowadays many young people are trying to um, learn Komi, even Russian speaking young people, and it's pretty good from that point that people are interested in it. Yeah. And so, it's very difficult to speak fluently Komi because there is uh, not much content and all the life, even uh, especially in the cities are in Russian everywhere. And there is almost no one who could you speak uh, in Komi within cities in Komi Republic. Yeah, I guess it's a common problem that there's not enough content, not enough like learning materials in small, small languages, or not even small, but like uh, languages. I mean, Komi is not a small language compared to some endangered languages. But anyways, it's not that uh, commonly commonly studied language, so it doesn't have that much content on YouTube. Like, I guess there are not many YouTubers who do like. Uh, daily vlogs or something like this because they can reach more people with Russian. Yeah, and there is the main problem is that there is no education in Komi language. Education is the like most crucial part of the developing language. Yeah. Uh, you said some Russians Russians are also learning Komi. Is that like in Komi Republic mostly? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I guess outside of Komi Republic or uh, those areas, 
where Komi people live, I guess it's quite hard to even study Komi. Maybe in some universities in Finland, Estonia, some Finno Ugric studies, I, I guess. Yeah, there are some Estonians and Finns uh, that speak Komi pretty well, but not so many. But still, there are some, and it's nice. Yeah. Uh, what about now when you live in Estonia? Do you, how often have you the chance to speak Komi? Uh, it's like, uh, not really, not every day, but a few times a week, I think I can find someone, someone at least to uh, write in Komi, not not to speak. Yeah. So and also, like, I, I I am reading many stuff, and I have some practice. Yeah. Enough practice. Yeah. So mostly online reading and maybe work related stuff. Yeah, mostly. Yeah. Yeah. What about your family? Do you do you call them? and talk on the phone often. yeah we talk through facetime uh, every week it also helps i think i don't know yeah are there any newspapers or something online that you also read in komi oh today i read more books than newspapers because in the newspapers there is only war happening yeah, 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 yeah. Um, so mostly I read books. Yeah. Do you have any good suggestions of like books or singers or like interesting content that you like to use in Komi? Uh, about content, we have uh, kind of big Telegram channel where. Uh, mm, many comic songs are published like every week and there is a big collection of comic music in telegram i can also send you this link to this uh, books i am not sure if you are able if people that listen this podcast in english should be able to read it in cyrillic it's better to listen but nowadays there is no there was before audiobooks in Komi, but I'm not sure if it's available now. Also, the seniors, I mean, I, I will send this link with the channel. My favorite singer is Anton Kuratov. He sings um, some acoustic songs, like very melancholic. Yeah. So, yeah. And there is also like... Um, uh, black metal bands but i don't really like it so I yeah really like this. yeah okay anyways we can we can put all those links here down uh so people who want to find this they can they can check them out there is uh any kind of content except video and movies i think for learning the language it might be enough but it's not that interesting to speak mm. Komi because yeah it's... yeah i think it would be maybe important if there were some komi youtubers or someone because i think uh, youtube is so big and these influencers around the world so if if there were just some more people who would create komi con content i think even People who want to learn Komi would really like to consume that kind of uh, content. Yeah, but also uh, I have my own Telegram bot with a text-to-speech service. I mean, you can paste uh, the text in Komi and it will read read it to you with pure Komi language as it should be. Oh, wow. Yeah, and also you can check there the accent, pure Komi accent for Finnish or for Estonian as well. Yeah, okay. It's re That's... really funny. Yeah. Uh, if in the future, if you become like a father, what do you think? Are you going to speak 
commit to your children or have you thought about this question yeah 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 i will speak only call me for sure yeah <laughs> and nothing else you have to ask all uh, the child call me children's books from your family or are there a lot of like children's books that you can read there to are. small children yeah for children there is enough content i think there is not enough content for teenagers yeah okay yeah, yeah. uh when i was traveling around finland we went in lapland into some libraries and we found some northern sami books which were mainly for kids but um yeah my my level is really low but Northern Sami, I think as a Finn, it's must much faster to progress. I learn quite quickly because it's uh, quite not similar to Finnish, but it's easy. But I think I, I have to loan, like I have to borrow some children's books because they look really good for, for my level. So maybe maybe this is a good strategy also for people who want to learn Komi, like try to find some comic books but uh, for children but I, I guess maybe there are not that many on Amazon or on online oh there there is no there... one on Amazon you could find it only through other people like uh, some PDF files and you can yeah, yeah. Buy, buy buy it official yeah uh, what's so only only piracy is <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah available here <laughs> Yeah, so basically, people should go to Komi Republic and then to the bookstores. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That yeah, a bit same with Northern Samis, mostly here in the libraries or yeah, maybe some online shops have them, but I haven't seen that much. Yeah, mostly in the libraries, I think. Or yeah what kind of language related goals do you have currently um is it to improve ex uh, estonian english other languages or do you have also some new languages in mind that you want to learn the main goal is uh, to start to speak in estonian at least it would be nice because I still have some kind of barrier when, when I can't like think too much and I have to switch to English sometimes. Mm. So it would be nice to start to speak it in decent level. Also, I, I am learning Finnish for very long. I learned Finnish like five years ago. Okay. And I really liked it and I was able to speak in it. <laughs> But currently I forgot everything, so I need to refresh this language for me as well. And uh, I have a Finnish language for Komi speakers, like study book, and that could help as well. What? <laughs> yeah. a Finnish, Finnish language for Komi speakers? Yeah, and it's available online for free. Okay. So... <laughs> I, I think it would be maybe good for Finnish people who want to learn Komi. Like, yeah, maybe. at least there is there is nice dictionary, Komi Finnish dictionary that I am using all the time. It's yeah. pretty nice. Yeah. yeah, I also can send it to you. Yeah. What else? It would be nice to uh, learn some Swedish, but nothing more. Yeah. Uh, well, that's, uh, yeah, th th that's a lot of new languages and uh i understand you want to improve your estonian because you live there and want to focus on that language um but how how did you start learning finnish 5 years ago what started this oh i played counter strike and i met uh, some good people there and they were finnish people and i started to hang out with them online and uh, and that time I found out that our languages are related and that who is like blowing my mind yeah. how, it is, <laughs> how it's possible that someone has the same word in other language. Yeah. So I played with them 
I started to listen Finnish music, and I still listen many Finnish music, and I really like. Oh, it. really? What 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 do you listen to? Oh, there are some cheesy songs. Uh, yeah. I don't remember the names. Uh, the name I remember is Hallo Helsinki. I love Hallo Helsinki. Ah, you know, one of the band members was in my high school, actually. I think it was uh, Leo. Nice. Yeah. But th there is many uh, other bands. Not yeah. uh, I can't But ha Hallo Helsinki names. and maybe similar, like pop. Yeah, pop rock, something like that. Yeah. And did you do the same as with Udmurt? You uh, translated the lyrics or found out what the lyrics were yeah, about? Yeah, it's like you are listening the song and you remember how it is, um, how it has to be pronounced through the songs because it's melodic and it's easier to remember. And you, when you translate it, you already know at least one sentence that you could say pretty fast and you know what it's mean or if you hear it you will understand it yeah also i used duolingo when they released the finnish language in there what else i don't know just speaking with people and listening yeah. music watching some content no, I, I i watched some finnish movies and um, Tuntamaton Sotilas was good. Yeah. Like pretty, pretty new man. Mm. Tällä pohjan tähden alla. Yeah. Also is a good, I want to read this book, but I am not sure <laughs> yeah. when I will be able to. Yeah. So you spoke with Finns. Was it during playing Counter-Strike? It was when, in the online, in Discord and... Uh, something like that when you have a voice chat and you are joining their yeah their party and they are speaking finnish there and you listen you try to communicate as well yeah, yeah. so you you have to force yourself uh, from the comfortable place and you will uh, learn it much faster than you and when you are in the comfortable like circle yeah i i, I agree have you ever tried uh, tandem.com or hello talk or that kind of mm, i i can't use it i tried but i have i don't know why uh, it's discomfortable for me yeah okay to speak with uh, like random people let's say yeah it's hard to find good ones but i've i've managed to find really really good ones like good language buddies there but yeah it's 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 not hard uh easy to find but i think yeah if there were some uh komi or other like i was trying to find some northern sami people uh, natives but no there are none so people would be so uh happy if they found some komi or some rare languages because it's really hard to find some with someone with whom to practice in these platform platforms they mostly have like bigger languages but yeah i understand it's not your thing but uh at least if there would be some people who speak komi or some other languages which are smaller i think that would also help people to learn because then they would have someone with whom they could practice. Okay. So, uh, yeah, I'm I'm still trying to find so someone who speaks Northern Sami uh, fluently. I, I mean, I have my online classes, but we are all Finns there, and I can't ask my teacher to practice with myself like a few times a week. So, yeah, that's that's something which is a bit hard maybe in the future technology and some games will help if there are like some better gpt is coming for the small languages it will be available for yeah 
that's one reason actually why I'm starting to learn computer science. I I have some ideas and I I yeah I want to create some games and applications to uh, learn more efficiently languages, especially these smaller ones. Yeah. What would you pick if you could uh, pick? Um, would you rather speak 10 biggest languages of the world perfectly or a thousand small, smallest ones? <laughs> That's a tough choice, I don't know. I am happy with my set of languages now. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> but in in theory, what do you think? Uh, could you pick one, or is it too hard? Uh, I, I think more is better. So, thousand small languages would be my choice. Thousands, uh, smallest ones, but even if you couldn't speak any English or any bigger ones, like the thousand smallest one from all the seven thousand. Uh, languages would you still pick the thousands uh, even if i don't have english or russian yeah you have only thousand smallest languages uh, so, <laughs> so number six thousand to seven thousand all that between that uh, then i will choose the <laughs> bigger languages yeah, because, yeah. I, because i need to communicate with people yeah, yeah. I mean, if they're left at least English, it would be easy okay. choice. But yeah, yeah. okay. In if, this case, I don't know. So if you could, you could uh, still keep English, then you would pick the thousand small small. One thousand small. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um. What about? I want to speak a bit about writing. Um. Would, well, before asking my hypothetical question, I want to ask. Um, so Gomi language had the old Permic script like hundreds of years ago, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. D did, did they talk about that at school, anything, or how, how was it in your time? Uh, they speak about it in the uh, subject called uh, like history of uh our land as i remember but uh they studied it for the russians who didn't choose komi so komi people uh usually don't know about this permic script like about anbur oh, but really? russians russians uh, pretty often know it better than komis itself themselves Oh wow, that's surprising. Um, is that also part of the strategy of hiding like Komi history or? Yeah, yeah, national identity is uh, like killed, and it's still trying to be like erased from the people's life. Yeah, but when did you find out about the old Permic script? It was in the student times, like after school for sure, but I don't remember when exactly. Yeah, like, but teenage years around that time? Around that, yeah, somewhere there. Yeah. yeah. How did you Maybe find Maybe early out? 20s, I don't know. Yeah. Did someone From of your friends tell you or? No, I mean, when I met this Finnish guys and I found out that we are related, I started to learn more about Komi history. And so through this learning, I found out about these things, Vermic script, and that we are related yeah. to Udmurts as well. I didn't know it before. Mm. What was your reaction? Were you like, oh my God, we had our own <laughs> script or... Uh, there was oh my god we have our own history i thought we oh. are russians oh shit that's <laughs> crazy yeah that was crazy for <laughs> me to find out it but about script it it was cool to have it i think it it looks like swedish uh runes and it's pretty fun to have this kind of writing 
yeah, nothing so special, but still, it's yeah. uh, kind of a part of our history. In the yeah, truth. but just wait, just a second. So I learned about the Permic script uh, last year when I was creating this uh, book about 100 writing systems with my wife. And I'm going to show all the viewers here the old nice. Permic script. Yeah, it's it's really cool. Uh, yeah, I was like, oh my god, uh, what Komi was the only Uralic language that had their own script and as like about some background I'll tell the listeners that uh, Old Permic was created in the 1500s I guess that was oh, 30, for, uh, for, for, 1372 yeah. by Stephen of Perm yeah Stefan Stefan Not yeah uh yeah, here it's in English form. Stephen oh, okay. Firm. So Steph Stefan. Stefan. Yeah. yeah. So and all the listeners who want to practice this, uh we have we we will have the link down here. Uh but yeah, anyways, uh yeah, only Uralic language that had the script. And I guess was it eighteen hundreds or something like that when they stopped using or 1900 something can you remember it was much earlier not uh, ah. that, uh, yeah but... so C Cyrillic probably replaced it uh, I'm not sure about replacing it yeah. it wasn't really actively used by people yeah. uh, but when uh, um when Komi people were able to get education in Russian, and then they started to use Cyrillic for Komi as well. So I would not say it was replaced. Okay, yeah. It, it was forgotten, I think. Mm. Yeah, that's what I've noticed has also happened to many scripts that they maybe weren't replaced, but just forgotten because uh so few people had the opportunity of education and being able to read and write so that's yeah yeah uh did you did you practice uh, writing these uh permic old permic script or uh, do you, you know have you heard about uh no so there is one. I, I developed a keyboard for Android for yeah. writing in uh, Unbook. Oh my God. And it's available in Play Store. <laughs> oh, really? Wow. Yeah. I, I, I am working now on the iOS version, but I am not sure when I will finish it. Yeah. I have it on my, my phone. And so, it works, so I can write <laughs> to practice. Yeah, uh, so anyone can download it from Apple, no, Google Store or Play Play Store? Play, uh, yeah, I don't remember how it calls Play Store, as I remember. Play, Play Store, yeah. So you can write uh, Anbur keyboard and you will find it. Anbur keyboard, okay. And then you can just, on your phone, use the Anbur uh, script. Yeah, you can use, you can write to people, you can, uh, I don't know, make yeah. notes, have a secret script for yourself. That's a great idea, <laughs> using, yeah. It, it was used as a secret script at some, one of the wars, I don't remember which one oh, okay. it was used. Wow, so Russian troops uh, probably used against Germany or someone. Yeah, I think it was World War, First World War. Okay. The second. I, I think Cherokee or some indigenous language in, in the United States or Canada was used also in World War One or Two as a secret language. I can't remember. Was it a language which has also a different script? No, I think it was 
no. Uh, I think it was just some indigenous language, maybe with the telegram. Uh, yeah, but that's a good, good way of uh, keeping your messages secret using a, a really rare language or a script. If you had to pick your secret secret language, well, okay, maybe you have Komi already and the Anbur as your secret language and secret script. I don't need any secret script because I don't have any secrets. Yeah, okay, okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, if you could pick uh, from the two, would you rather speak all the languages of the world, but you couldn't read and write? anything or could you would you pick uh that you could read and write all the languages but you wouldn't be able to speak mm. you would understand but you couldn't speak just write and read yeah second option seems uh, good for me <laughs> which one the second <laughs> yeah <laughs> without speaking okay that would be fine for you yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I still have internet. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, true. Uh, so you have mentioned quite many projects you're working on, like the Anbur and all those. Uh, are all your projects somehow related to uh, Komi or languages, language technology? Yeah, before I developed the keyboard for iOS for Komi language because it didn't exist for Android it exists before but not for iOS I developed that also I developed the application for our local uh, TV company to watch to be able to watch uh, the, this Komi national TV on your phone but this one already is dead I think yeah. What was there also? Uh, still, like, it's very long project. I'm still developing the application, um, Duolingo, like, for Komi language. Wow. Uh, the quiz is already done, but not other parts. Yeah. So, yeah, kind of. Also, we translated the interface for VK. Yeah. translated interface for telegram i don't know what but something was also that i don't remember now really interesting because uh i mean i'm also becoming a computer person how would you say uh studying computer science and i also have many ideas which have something in common with yours i like one of the apps that I want to uh, create is a quiz which has 100 or 200, like a polyglot quiz and yeah, many other things. So I think we we definitely have a lot to speak in the future and I have to ask some uh, tips when I start my studies because I'm just starting from almost zero. Not, all, not zero, I know something, but yeah, I'm, I'm really... Um, excited to hear about your uh, projects because it's uh, it's a bit the same that I I plan to do myself in the near future like creating creating stuff with technology uh, to language learners and at the same time for myself um, so uh have you have you made a living for yourself like creating all these things uh is it mostly for your passion or have you also been able to earn with all these uh projects i never tried and never wanted to earn anything yeah um, i just was um, i doing these projects like because i need them for yeah. example the keyboard was developed because I didn't have a keyboard on my phone. So what yeah. was the option to develop it? So I developed the yeah, yeah, yeah. research for everyone. Uh, for the application for the national TV, I also developed it because there was no option to watch it on my phone. So 
yeah, yeah. yeah. So my goal is to make things that I need. I don't mm-hmm. need any ma- money for it. Or something yeah. like. But at least you like uh, make your living also with those projects. What does it mean? Make uh, your living? Like uh, earn your sal- salary, like uh, to be able to pay the bills and like you don't need. No, uh, not by these projects. Okay, I, so you... uh, I have full time job and he had full-time job before that wasn't related to anything like this okay so you have needed a full-time job and these have been like some side projects yeah pet projects it's called yeah and do you think it's it's an advantage that you speak Komi as your mother tongue and russian as your second language now when you live in estonia and you have this technological skills do you think that's an advantage for you and you are able to get easy more easily jobs uh komi is advantage for komi people because it makes uh for example english easier to learn than for the people who speak only russian yeah because the it in some ways it works the same as english works so it's much easier to understand some things yeah so that was the main advantage the english but about so also common language gave me this uh, work position that i am on now and it makes uh, possible to come to Estonia because I had connections and everything uh, was because the Komi language, I think. Yeah, so it has had a lot of advantages definitely in your life. For me, yeah, yeah, yeah. It yeah. Has, and I don't understand why people don't want to like keep the language alive. Many people talk about it, that we don't need this language. But like, uh, my example shows that it could help a lot. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so native Komi people have said that. Yeah, for example, my cousin, sister, she doesn't uh, speak to their children in Komi at all. Yeah. I, I don't know. I heard some people are, are afraid that uh their children will have accent in russian because of the komi and they don't mm. want to have accent because it would be bad for them yeah i don't know it's stupid reason i think yeah i i agree i i think it's really important to be able to speak your like your native tongue that has been passed down like centuries to you so I, to know your and it's also fun to speak as much language as, as you can and it's if your parents can give you any language for free why would you do that yeah yeah true but i think you're a really good uh example of uh like what it enables being able to speak komi so i hope this uh this podcast episode like motivates people who speak languages that people young people are maybe abandoning now because of bigger languages like russian or maybe in brazil for portuguese or in australia for english so yeah i hope it has some impact and i think i i've got i've asked all the questions i have wanted is there still something you want to ask maybe me or something to tell the listeners that that we haven't talked about I don't know. I mean, I will leave my link to the social media, and if people are interested, you could contact me anytime, and I will try to help with anything that they want. Anything. Feel free to ask. Yeah, feel free to ask anything, not under related to come. For example, developing some things like pretty easily would help. Yeah, to help, and at least to try. So everyone who has anything to Alexei, I will have the links here. Contact Alexei if you have the feeling. Um, Thank you so much. It was a really good 
discussion. I learned also myself a lot, and I'm I'm sure the listeners too. Thank you. Thank you, and bye. See you in the next episode.